We're going to start Nun Vav Amin Beis. It's towards the bottom of the page. There. There's two dots there. It's six lines up. Vihiza. So this specimen learning should be a panacea. The Kain Gadol, he did the sprinkling inside the Kedush HaKadoshim, remember? Uh, he did for the Dhamma Par, he sprinkled the blood of the bull once upward and seven times downward. That meant once uh, underhand and seven times overhand. And then he did for the goat also. Uh, once upward and seven times downward. Now he goes out and he sprinkles all the prayers connected on my bachot. It's um, against the opposite the curtain. Which part of the curtain? Part of the curtain that's directly opposite the um, the arm, which would probably be in the center. This is a quote from our Mishnah. He's doing this separately. The Dhamma part, remember, because there were these pedestals there where he can put the blood down. So he put the blood of the goat down, takes the blood, the blood of the bull, and he does the sprinkling. And he goes back and he does the blood of the goat, and he does the sprinkling on the iron outside. Tanarabbanan. It says in the Pasuk, the, the rabbi started in a brisa, quoting the Pasuk, Bechin yasa mayid. And so you should do in the tent of meeting. This is the verse that immediately follows what you should do in the Kedush HaKadoshim. We said once above, seven below. So we should do in the tent of meeting. What's it coming to teach us? It says, That's what it's coming to tell us. That just like you had to sprinkle the blood in the Kedush HaKadoshim, you also sprinkle the blood in the outer room, which is the called the Hechal, the Kedush. Just like inside the Kedush HaKadoshim was once above and seven below from the bull. That's so too, you do the same in the Hechel. Just like from the blood of the goat was once above and seven below in the Kedush HaKadoshim from the goat. So you do in the Hechel. The Gemara is going to go back and explain. But uh, meanwhile, we're just quoting the Brisa and then... That's the end of the Pasuk. That's the end of the Pasuk. Even when the Jewish people are Tamei, the Shechina is there. This Tzaduki told Rabbi Hanina, this Tzaduki told Rabbi Hanina, Now you are definitely Tamei. Quoting a Pasuk in Eicha, the Ksiv Tumasa B'Shulea, her impurity is on her skirt, on her garment. That's uh, what it's talking about, the Jewish people in exile. It says that uh, we're tummy. So Amar Lei, Rabbi Hanina tells to the Tzaduki, he says, Tachazi, come and see Maksivu, what it says about the Jewish people, that Hashem dwells with them even in their impurity. I feel this much shame to me. Even when they're tamay, the shechina is still with them. So there's different approaches to understanding this, but it's either could be um, that the Jewish people in, in exile are compared to Nida. Now, Nida is an impurity that comes and goes. It's not a so we're not really like intrinsically tamay. So it, it comes and goes, right? Uh, the other pshat is, is that Hashem means that Hashem comes down to us on whatever level we're at. So it's not that we have to be so high to be able to reach Hashem. No, Hashem comes down. Okay, let's go back to discuss what we did here. We said that seven times, uh, one and seven for the bull, one and seven for the goat. 
that was in the Kedesh HaKadashim. So too, we're going to do the same thing outside the Kedesh HaKadashim, in the Heichal. Problem is, is that when we first started learning together, three, three and something years ago, we had this Gemara in Tzavachim about Dover um, Halamid Behekish, Chayzer Malamid Behekish. How do you know that you have to do this seven times uh, for the goat? How do you know you have to do seven times for the goat? Well, it doesn't say it, but we learn it from the par. How do you know they have to do one time uh, for the par? Well, it doesn't say it, but we learn it from the goat. So we had a hekish, a, um, a comparison, um, a juxtaposition of the two verses. So it told me we learned one from the other. So how do we know they have to do it in the heichal? It says, well, we're going to learn it from the Kedush HaKadosh. Now, that's a problem because the rule is, is that one something that's learned Behekish cannot then go and teach Behekish. It, it, it doesn't have the strength to pass on to the next, to an, another halacha. The whole, the whole halacha was only learned because of a comparison. You can't then take a comparison and make another comparison. So, V'chidavara Lamed Behekish, Chazer Malamed Behekish, the Gemara is asking, how can you learn what to do in the Heichal if what you knew in the Kedush HaKadoshim was only Behekish, and now you're going to learn to the Heichal from that which was Behekish? Says, My answer is not a real hackish, the first hackish. The, we knew that you have to sprinkle above. We knew that you have to sprinkle below on both of them. It was just the number we didn't know. It's a small detail. So we already knew what we did, what, what we did. we're supposed to do something. We didn't know exactly what it was. So we had to figure that out from something else. So that's not a real hekish. But here, the second one is a hekish. So, but the first one is already it's really called. Yeah, the, se uh, that's the second. The second one. Right. Well, it says the chin yasa. Well, the almighty don't know what to do. Um, so, what do we do? What are we saying? But the first one, it's called Himenu Vidavaracha. It's Himenu, it's from the thing itself. And there's a side point that adds in some details. Okay, so that's our answer. The Gemara asks that Hani Chalmanda Malayavi Hekesh, Chalmanda Mahavi Hekesh, Michael It's not so clear if Himenu Vidavaracha, if I have the basic concept and the details I'm just getting from a comparison, is that considered a Hekesh or not? If it's considered a hekish. According to the opinion that it's not a hekish, it's not a considered comparison. So great, we have our answer. What about according to the other opinion? I'm not uh, uh, suggesting that the fact that I can't learn one heckish to continue it on means that it's not uh, it's not solid would be solid, you'd be able to continue it out. <laughs> Maybe. I don't, I don't know. know. Why can't we go for it? Discussing here, what's the um, what's the reason for the development package? It's not chaser amalamet package. Is it because it's weak, or is it because 
that's how comparisons work. But you can only do it once, and, and that's it for, the, for that case. But it's still solid for, for that case. I think that sounds better. Uh, everything has, it's like a stretch. It's like a, you can stretch it only so far. You stretch it over. But just because you stretched it to here doesn't mean you can continue stretching. Okay. <laughs> so the Gemara answers, according to this opinion, that that uh, it's considered a heckish, even though it has a basis. So how do we have, how can we learn to the oil mayan? So it says, is who the Gemiri mehadadi. Very interesting. You hear what's happening here? It's not the same heckish. I compare animal to animal. And then I compare location to location. So I'm not extending this animal, what I learned from this animal, to another animal, you know, to continue. I'm not stretching it like that. I'm just saying everything that was done in the Kedesh HaKadoshim is now done in the Heichal. It's not, it's not extending the Hekish. It's another Hekish, but it's, it's, it's on the location. It's not on the, um, it's not on the animal. Okay. Yeah, that was from the part of the so The first echo was, was the animal to animal part of the so And now we're just doing heichal to kedushakadashim to heichal. Ibayaseima, another way of, of doing this, if you want, you could say, is chutz mi bifnim chadazim nagamar. It's really all one one lima. I have the animals already set up. I have the the, the location set up. It's it's all there. Originally, when I did my first hekish, I said that it's one above and seven below for for everything. It's It's when I had the first hekish, I I already knew that I'm gonna have to do it in the hechal. And I just had to learn how many times. So I have a heckish that tells me how many times. Okay. Tana, kashumaza ina maza ala prechas al kinegana prechas. It says that when he sprinkles the blood, it doesn't have to hit the curtain. It's just in front of the curtain. Talking about the sprinkling of the blood outside in the Heichal, uh, one and seven from the par and one and seven from the goat. Amar Rabbi Lazar Bar Abiyasi. Rabbi Lazar Bar Abiyasi says, "Ani risir b'raimi v'hayol ha'kamati pedam shel par b'sar shel yim ha'kipurim." Rabbi Lazar Bar Abiyasi says that I was there in Rome. Um, it wasn't the Vatican. <laughs> it was before, probably. It was a pizza shop. Uh, no, Rome wasn't uh, Christian until later, until Constantine. Um, but he was in Rome, and he saw the preface. The Gemara tells us the story of what he was doing there. We, we had it in Milo. He said that um, there was a demon in, uh, in the king's store. The beginning of the story was that there were three decrees against the Jewish people. They can't uh, work on Shabbos, they can't have a bris. And there was one more. They can't keep Shabbos. They can't keep Shabbos. They can't have a bris. That was something else. Um, what the third one was. There was another thing. That was another thing. Another. Anyway, let's see. This, this guy goes over there. In the Senate, and he says, um, if you have an enemy, do you want him to be str uh, strong or weak? He said, uh, weak. He says, so why do you care if, he, uh, if they have a breast? Let them have it, they'll be weaker. He says, if you want to, if you have an enemy, do you want him to be rich or poor? He said, poor. He said, so why do you care if they don't work on Shabbos? Let them not work on Shabbos. It was a uh, Oh, I carved some Mishpacha. He says, do you want them to be a lot of people or less? Do you want them to be less people? So uh, why do you care if they keep the laws of Tarsim Mishpacha? So um, anyway, they said, you're right. 
So they took away the three decrees. Then they thought about it. They said, this guy must be Jewish. <laughs> and they put all the decrees back. So they said, we have to go get this. Uh, you know, so who can go? They said, Rav Shem Be'echai will go. Well, who will go along with him? So, yeah. They said, so Rav Elizabeth Berbiesi is going to go. So Rav says, no, you're going to harm him. This is not a promise I won't harm him. Anyway, this is the whole story, what happened. But um, uh, on the boat, so um, this demon, Ben Talmion, says uh, he's going to help. Ben Talmion says that he's going to, he says he's going to help. He goes into the king, inside the king's daughter. He says, I can't be cured unless Rav Shimon uh, comes and heals me. So I guess they go to the docks. They hear Rav Shimon has arrived. So he goes over there and he says, get out of here. Ben Talmion leaves. So they were so happy that he healed the, the princess. They said, you can take anything from the treasury. So he takes the document that had the, the rules against the Jewish people, he takes them. So Reb Lezer Berbiesi was there. And Reb Lezer Berbiesi says, well, I was there in that treasury. I saw, he saw a bunch of things. One of the things that he saw is the parechas. He looked at the parechas and he says, had a lot of blood on it, a lot of drops of blood from the goat and from the pot and from the bull of Yom Kippur. The Gemara asks, How do you know? How do you know which carbon it was? There's other carbonas that they sprinkle on them. So the, he answered, or the Gemara is explaining, the Chaza Davidi Kesidron. Remember, we said that it has to be sprinkled like in a row like a whip that would go downward. So he, he saw the blood was in a row going down, like drop by drop, to eight drops. So um, that's clearly from the, from the carbon of Yom Kippur. Carbon of Yom Kippur. Utanan nami gabi par helam davr shal And it was also taught about the par helam davr shal tzibar. Ki agav and assimile. Shumaz alay yanegim beparechas. When he would sprinkle, it says the Parhelm Dabr Shal is a carbon that's brought that the community um, does a sin based on the Sanhedrin costuming a certain way that was incorrect. And then they realize that they made this mistake, so they have to bring a carbon to the community. So we have a similar story that Kishumazalay and Egimba Parechas, it says that they would sprinkle on the Parechas, but it wouldn't actually touch the Parechas, it was just towards the Parechas. If it touched it, okay. Amar Rabbi Lazar Bar Yesi, and you receive Brahma, Vayola Kamati Bidam Shal Parham Davar Shal Tzibah Sir Rabbi Dazar. He says, I was in Rome and I saw it. It had the blood, the blood stains on the parichas, on the curtain, from the goat of of um, Abay Dazara, and from the bull of the Parham Davar Shal Tzibah. The, the goat of Abay Dazara, as if they served Abay Dazara, uh, thinking that a certain service was uh, acceptable. The Gemara says, "How do you know which sacrifice it was? Just blood stains on a on a uh, curtain don't tell you anything." So it says, "No, it does." The Chazina David is like a sidron. It was clear that it wasn't in a in a in a row. It wasn't in a line. So we have two versions of the story. One is that it was Parvisar of Yom Kippur. The other one is Parhelm Davar Shaltibar or the Sar of Avedusar. Yeah. There's a little bit of a problem with this Gemara. Anyway, I saw the issue. Yeah, Tesis. Tesis says, what's he talking about? Was it the, it's the Tesis on Niri Siyaparimi. Was it the Bayes Rishon? Which Parechus was it? The Parechus of the Bayes Rishon? It says they didn't have a Parechus in the Bayes Rishon. It was a, a wall. Was it the Bayashini? They didn't have a Parhelm Dover Shaltiba in the Bayashini. There's a Gemara that says that they that um in, that, that they didn't do that carbon anymore in the Bayashini. <clears throat> Just to figure out a way of doing this. The, there is an option of answering, it gives different answers. There is an option of answering that it's the bias region. And there was another curtain. There was a curtain in the doorway. Yeah, that would explain that. Yeah, otherwise we had a difficulty with the staves of the Aaron protruding. How could they protrude if there was a wall? 
the second base of Mikdash, there was no wall. That, there was no water. First base of Mikdash, there was no curtain. So it must be, it must be that there was a curtain in the doorway. And that's what it was. Okay. This also implies that there actually was at one time a Par Helam Davar. Oh, you mean that it happened? Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, if you saw the blood, then it happened. Yeah, okay. We have a uh, Talmudic discussion coming up. All right. Yeah, that's possible also. Yeah, I'm just suggesting that the two versions of the story could be that on the parishes itself, you saw both stains. You saw the, this, uh, the stain, you saw those, uh, that stain. Okay. Let's say the blood gets mixed up. The blood of the Dhamma par together with the blood of the Dhamma sar. Now what we're talking about here is that before there was any um, any sprinkling of the blood, it just got mixed up originally. Uh, there's a little bit of a problem with this because the sar wasn't even shafted yet. But if he did it out of order, he went, you know, someone was stirring the blood. He was supposed to sprinkle that blood. Then go out and chef the, the sar and then take that in. But let's say he didn't do that. Let's say the guy that was stirring it, another guy that was stirring it, um, he just left him stirring. He went out and he chef the sar. And then he mixed up the two bloods together. Yeah, so what's he going to do to sprinkle? It's all mixed in, everything. <laughs> no, we're going to say that it has to be mixed in together. Yeah, it could be. Uh, I'm not someone suggesting the chat is that it's Nisar who mean, meant that it was confused. But I, I think from the Gemara, it's clear that it was mixed. So I'm a Rava. Rava says, Nisan Achas Lamayla. You do one sprinkling for both. See, every blood, it's a, it's a, a liquid mixture. So it's going to mix equally, probably. Right? So when you do the sprinkling above, which was underhand, the first one, so it had in it both the, the par and the sar in that mixture. When you do the seven below, it has the par and the sar. And you did, you did both all together. Yeah. This, um, I like to mention this person that uh, Hassan told me when they came out with the blender. So his father was all excited. Does it take some time to eat? So now you can put the salad and the soup and the, everything all in one thing. You can drink the whole meal now, and then you have so much more time to learn. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So here he's, um, <laughs> he's, uh, He's trying to do everything. Well, he got it mixed together. And Rabbi says, yeah, you do it all in one go. You do only uh, one in seven. And you're going to be eight. Amrua Kamei the Rabbi Yermia. They said this in front of Rabbi Yermia. Amar Bavloi Tipshoi. Mishim Dadari Bari the Chashech HaMishmaita the Mechashvan. Rabbi Yermia happened to, happens to have come from Babel himself. But he left Babel and he went to Eretz Yisrael. He, he was not so fond of the learning in Babel. He says, foolish Babylonians, they live in a land of darkness, so they say dark statements. It meant like they don't have any clarity. They, um, so, who's the older brother of Yemen? I'm not sure. Says Hakayav Lamaila the Sar Mikami Mata the Par. You have a problem here because there's an order in the Torah of how to of how this should be performed. 
you do the one above and the seven below of the power of the bull. And then you do the one above and the seven below of the goat. What he's doing is he's doing one above of the power of the sar. You didn't do the seven below of the power. The one above of the sar has to come after the power. He'll conclude from atoning in the holies. That has to be done, concluding the par and then the sar. He learns that from the pasuk of the Bekila, and he'll conclude. Elam Rabbi Yirmiya, Rabbi Yirmiya says you have to do it differently. What you do is you do once above and seven below for the sake of the goat, for the sake of the bull, of the par. And then you do the same thing again. See, you can't get away with doing it all once, saying that it's all mixed. You have to do it twice. I don't know how this happened. What, what's happening here is that he did one above for the for the for the par. And then he's gonna do the, the seven below, and somehow the blood gets mixed up with the with the sar. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I'm, I'm not sure how that uh, how that happened. I mean, he was in the Kodesh Hakodesh. He's only supposed to have one cup there. I don't know the, the situation. <laughs> they say Neyach Mitzvah and Kaisen. A lot of mistakes. <laughs> Nayach, Nayach is a two-letter word. They said they can spell Nayach with seven mistakes. How do you mess up seven, seven mistakes and only there's only two letters? That... <laughs> oh, you got to work it out. Work it out with the Aleph, with the Hey, with the Anna. You know. <laughs> they told me that I am the who is. Okay. So what, what's happening here is the Dhamma par was the, the Dhamma par was done once. What's he gonna do now? One above. It says like this. Sava Raf Papa Kameda Rava Lameimar, the Raf Papa thought to say in front of Rava, Nasin Shavalamatala Shame Par, Ula Shame Sar, the Khaisavanish Nachasamala Shem Sar. I have a solution. You do the seven below for both together, because the par was already done. And then afterwards, you do one above for the uh, for the sar. You go back and you correct that. Amalei Rava ad hashta karalan Until now, in Eretz Yisrael, they called us fools. But hashta tipshoi the tipshoi, and now they're going to call us fools of fools. I don't, know, I don't know what that means. I guess that the fools call them fools uh, or something like that. What is that? The worst of the fools. The Kamigamrin and Lo, because we heard what they said, but like Gamiri, but we didn't understand or something like that. I'm not sure what, they, what it means. Let's so see, you heard half the, uh, half the story that you don't want to do, that you have to do the Dhamma Sar above separately, and you're doing it afterwards. It says that there's an order to this also. It has to be first the Dhamma Sar above, and then the Dhamma Sar below, right? The one above and seven below, and you're doing it out of order. Ella Amar Rava, Rava says, Nisin Shabalamatul Hashim Par. This would be like similar to what Rabbi Yirmiya responded before. You do seven below for the Par. And then you do, um, one above and seven below for the go. Okay. Now we have your have enough in your case. The sarvala cases the cases. This is very confused. He confused um, the bloods. <clears throat> he doesn't know. He has two. Um, Two containers. We said yesterday that the, you should be able to tell the difference. One is whiter, the one is more red. Maybe the crane god was older, maybe it was weak. We said it was weak. Um, fasting, he couldn't uh, discern which one was which. So, Nysen, 
Yeah, this is like a riddle. They said, um, um, if you have two containers of socks, one's black and one's white, and they're all mixed together, all mixed together. So you need to get up here. So how many, you, the, the room is dark, but how many socks should you take when you for sure have a, have a pair? How many sacks do you need to take to, to the light? The three. So three. Because uh, whichever way, three is enough. So here, what we're saying is like this. Um, you sprinkle the blood once. You don't know which cup is which. And it has to be in order. So you sprinkle the blood once. Um, well, once, once above and seven below from one cup. Then you go to the other cup, then with the other cup, you sprinkle once above and seven below. And then you go back to the first one and you sprinkle once above and seven below. So automatically you did it in order. Yeah. You might have to delete one of them, but, but it's automatically it's in order. Either the first two were in order or the second two were in order. So you only need three times to resolve this issue. So that's what it says. Nice and nice and nice and nice and nice and nice and now I have three cups. Before I only had two cups, I just didn't know which one was which. I was sprinkling three times. Now I have three cups. I mixed, I um I mixed some of the blood into one container. There's one container that has a mixture. Then there's two other containers that have the, the, the blood of the goat and the blood of the bull separated. So pshita, it's very obvious that ki yoyev that when you're going to do the the, um, the sprinkling of the blood, you're going to do it from the ones that are definite, not the mixture. The ones that are. Miuhanach shirayim havuli saidasli edilma dechin havivazulam. We throw in another halacha over here. Leftover blood after the sprinkling is supposed to go onto the foundation of the altar. But blood that's not left over from the sprinkling, blood that's called dachli, that's not eligible for sprinkling, goes is poured, poured into the ama, which is a, uh, like a drain in the base of the English. So the mixed blood, is that considered shirayim, leftovers, and it's poured onto the foundation of the mispah? Or is it considered rejected and it's poured down the drain? Amar of Papa. Even according to the opinion that says, if I have separate cups and I sprinkle from one and I don't sprinkle from the other, but because one of the cups was used, it makes the other one into shirayim, which means the leftovers, not the rejected leftovers, and it's poured onto the aside. But Hanimili Hechadi Boy Lamesa Vatsiyah. That was only because I could have used that container to sprinkle from. But this one wasn't even eligible because it was mixed. So this is clearly rejected. In other words, there is a machlaikas, as we're going to see in a moment. There is a machlaikas if it's going to come out like this then. A chatas is sprinkled on the four corners. Of the on the outer misbeah, it's, there's four um, applications of the blood. Let's say the Kayan collected it in four different cups. And he used one cup for each corner. Okay, fine. So all the leftover blood should be um, shirayim, and it's all done, it's poured on the foundation. Let's say he only used one cup for all the corners, but he has another three cups that he was... Are you planning on using or something? So is kais echad, that one cup that was actually used, is it oise chaveira? Chaveira. Uh, shirayim. Does it make the other ones leftovers? So it's a machlaikas. Because it wasn't used. Those cups weren't used. So Rav Papa is saying over here, even according to the opinion that says kais echad oise chaveira shirayim, but that's only because they were eligible to be used. But here it wasn't even eligible. Amalei Ravun... The, the application of the blood on the Mizbeach is the atonement. 
it's the that's the that's the, the main part of the sacrifice. And as everything else is done, there's the slaughtering of the blood and the, the, the receiving the blood, but the, applying it, putting it onto the altar. That's the the person was bringing the sacrifice that causes the atonement. That's the big deal. Yeah. <laughs> I'm only, you want to know what it means? I'll be chassidus. Yeah, yeah, ask it. <laughs> so, I'm only Rav Hunabre, the Rav Shola, Rav Papa. You see, Rav Papa, we had before, he was a student of Rava. And Rav Hunabre, the Rav Shola, is also, student, is also a student of Rava. I believe they're friends from Papa and Rav Hunabre, the Rav Shola. They're later generation. Uh, uh, I'm arrived right, towards the end of the I'm right, I'm right, I'm period. So he says, other Rabbah, on the contrary, a few lamanda mar kaisecha, isecha very dichai, animal dach via diam, a vahecha de dach via diam light. No, he's saying, over there, if I would have four cups and I only use one of them, you're rejecting the other three. Over here, you're not rejecting the other three. You weren't supposed to use that uh, that other one cup. You weren't supposed to use it. So you didn't actually go and reject it. It wasn't supposed to be used. Maybe that's not considered really rejected. You didn't actually call, you didn't actually do something that shows that it wasn't chosen. The Tani was taught in a brisa. We're talking about the leftover blood from a carbon chathos. And I have two uh, sections in the Torah we talk about chathos. One is about the chathos of a nasi. If a king does a um, does an avera, he brings a, a specific chathos. And then if there's a regular person that does an avera, he brings a chathos. So by one of them, it says, the, blood, the leftover blood is spilt on, to, on the foundation. The other one says, and all the blood is spilled on the foundation. So it says like this. How do you know that if you used four cups to receive the blood, that you um, pour all the remaining blood into the foundation, if, they were, if the sprinkling went from each of the four cups and the applications of the blood. It says all the blood is poured. It means all four cups. Maybe if you only used one of them to apply the blood and you have three that were not used at all. It says, you pour the blood. Let me say all the blood. It means only that one. Only that one is poured onto the foundation. The rest, the other three cups are poured down the drain because they're rejected. Rabbi Lazar Barab Shimon he says, He argues, he said that they're all considered shirayim, so that we have machlekes here. If one cup was used, the other three were not. The first opinion said that they're poured down the drain. Rabbi Shimon says that they're considered uh, leftover blood and they're poured onto the foundation of the Mizbeah. He says, no. All the blood is poured. So the Gemara asks, Rabbi Eliezer Bar Shimon, Rabbi Eliezer Bar Shimon, usually. Rabbi Eliezer Bar Shimon, but I have another verse that says you pour the blood. It doesn't, without the word all, without saying all the blood. That's just coming to tell me that I don't have to take the blood that's on the neck of the animal. I don't have to wipe that off. And I'll also apply that. That or not apply that that blood doesn't need to be put down the uh, on the on the foundation of the altar. Okay, so that was telling me that we have a machlekes, and now we have two ways of viewing it. Rav Papa's way of viewing it, and Rav Puna Breder Vishuah is the main problem here because you rejected it, or is it because it wasn't eligible to be used? Who knows which one would be worse? Rav Papa said not being eligible to be used is worse than being rejected by you. Rav Huna Breit Rav says, no, you rejecting it is worse. Okay. Yira dama par le teich dama sar.
um, at a certain point, it's the blood of the Dhammapada and the Dhammasara is meant to be mixed together later on. It's meant to be mixed. Now, it's not so clear at which point. After it's sprinkled onto the Rechas, it's then applied to the four corners of the Mizbeya Hapanimi, the inner altar. Okay, so it goes like this. That's not, that's not unclear. Is it applied? Is it applied um, before it's before? Is it mixed before it's applied? Iridama Palter Thamasar. Tanan Kamadama Ma'arban Lekronis. This Mishnah was taught according to the opinion that says that it's mixed before it's applied to the corners. The itmar, because it was stated, itmar is a problem, problematic word here, because it's not supposed to say itmar by, by tanoim. Itmar is always a statement of amirai. Yeah, this is a problematic word. The, the commentaries discuss if it's a mistake. Um, it could be that we don't, the, the way of explaining it would be that we don't have, we don't have the, the text to be able to say this as Tanai, would, would, would be um, the Tanya or something, if it would, there would be a text of a Brisa. Um, we just have it in tradition that there was, that this Machlaikas existed, so it could be there's an Amaira that's saying this over. The Itma Rabbi Yeshi of Rabbi Yenison, there's a Machlaikas Rabbi Yeshi and Rabbi Yenison. Is it mixed before it's applied to the corners or not? Or is it applied to the corners separately? The Dhammapari and the Dhammasar separately. Okay, so that's a Machlaikas, two opinions. The problem is it doesn't tell us who holds what. It's Rabbi Yishia and Rabbi Yenison. Let's say that it's Rabbi Yishia that says that it's mixed. The Amar, Afa Gab like Sivyachtov, Command like Sivyachtov Damit. Rabbi Yeshia holds that when it says uh, in the Pasuk, a man that curses his father and mother is put to death. So he holds that if the Torah didn't teach me that it's the father or the mother, I would have thought that it meant father and mother. Rabbi Yeshia, a complex of Yachdom, even though it doesn't say yachtav, it's always assumed that when it says that consecutive and, that it means both, not or. So if that's the case, then um, when it says that you take from the blood of the par and the blood of the sar, and you apply it, it sounds like both together. That's Rabbi Yishia's opinion that it's both together. The hand over there means both. So, um, even though it doesn't say yachta, it's as if it says yachta together. Umar says no. Afilu teimer Rabbi Yenison. It could still be Rabbi Yenison because Shani Hachad Tiksev Achas. Over here, the pasuk says Achas. So, let's see what the mission said. It says not al damasar. Now it doesn't say in our Mishnah yet that he that he applies it. Yeah, it's the next Mishnah on the next page. Okay, what is the Pasuk? Do you have any Vikiper Aaron Al Karnaisav Achas Bashana? It says that Aaron atones on the corners once a year, but that achas means that it could be that he does them both together, Ahas, and that could be the source for Rav Yenison. In other words, even though Rav Yenison usually doesn't say that a consecutive of uh, uh, cons- uh, means and, he would say it means or, but here because of the word Ahas, possible that it means and. Okay, let's leave it here. <laughs>